looking uh, inside view a little bit like I'm drawing now. Uh, the annular wing was, was quite extensive in diameter and cord. The cockpit sat out ahead, and in there was an ATAR turbojet. Uh, it also had the jimbled nozzle, but being inside a, uh, an aerodynamic duct, it got some extra thrust through sucking air in in hover modes uh, and getting a, a thrust augmentation. Snegma's creation was named the Coleopter. The Coleopter was truly an exotic airplane. At the bottom of its metal skirt were four small triangular stabilizers. Located beneath these were unique shock-absorbing landing gear with small castered wheels. The wing was attached to the fuselage by four radial struts. Only one Coleopter was built. In the spring of 1959, the plane was hauled out of the factory under the cover of darkness. Before being flown, the Coleopter was hoisted onto a rotating platform. The entire plane was then tilted up and down to expose the pilots to the unique sensation of flying a tail sitter. Well, the Coleopter, like the vertical tail sitters uh, before it in America, the X-13 and the, uh, the uh, Lockheed and Convair tail sitters, still had this peculiar position for the pilot, a most unnatural position to fly. And when they'd come to the vertical after doing a decelerating transition, they had effectively to feel for the ground. And no view downwards and behind them at all. And it's, uh, it's not a position that I think pilots would ever get used to. I mean, again, all this flying was done in clear blue skies and the rest of it, of course. And so they never really tested it under adverse meteorological conditions or with a big gusting wind. But the Coleopter was a revolutionary airplane, combining the uncertainties of a tail sitter with an exotic annular wing design was a bold venture. To underscore the pioneering nature of the program, Snegma held a unique photo opportunity. The Coleopter sat perched next to Louis Blériot's historic monoplane. Test pilots of the world's newest tail sitter had a moment to sit and ponder the historic cross-channel flight made in the Blériot 50 years before.